Hello everyone, Tom with Capo Fetish. I have a question for you today, and that question is, what album by an artist signaled the death knell for you as a fan going forward? Basically, where did you draw a line in the sand and say, I'm done, done with this artist, I can't relate. So today I present albums that soured my fandom. I'm gonna start off here with an artist I still love. I love his past work. Um, he's an amazing, amazing artist, but when this album came out, kind of spelled the death knell for me going forward with this artist. I never really liked anything he did after this album. I'm talking about Peter Gabriel, the So album from 86. Peter Gabriel was always a cutting edge artist, whether it was in Genesis or was solo career. Uh, and when this album came out, I thought, well, he's kind of changing it up a little bit. This is kind of cool, a little different from the security album, a lot different. Obviously going for more of a mainstream appeal, um, or some would say even selling out. I uh, actually liked some of the songs at one time. I still like Mercy Street. I think that's a, it's a, just an absolute killer track. That voice again is pretty good, but the rest of the album has been overplayed to death. And I, I don't think it's a true representation of Peter Gabriel, who he is as an artist. I think when people, the mainstream here, Peter Gabriel, they think of this album, they don't think of Foxtrot or Lamb Lies Down on Broadway or Peter Gabriel 1 or 2 or 3, the Melt album or Security. They just think of, they think of, this is, this is what they think of, Peter Gabriel So. And for me, I think from this album onward, everything he released, at least for my taste, was pretty dull and boring. Uh, the album that came out after this, I think it was called Us. I found that almost like a repeat of this record. Just very dull. Um, and as he as he progressed too, as he as he progressed, I think all his albums be, became very uh, new agey sounding. That new album of his, I tried tried listening to it, so slow and so just I don't know, just didn't really do anything for me. So this album for me pretty much spelled the death knell for me as a fan going forward for future material. And uh, again, still love his Genesis material. Love his first four solo albums, but this was kind of it for me. I never really liked anything Peter Gabriel did from this album forward. Another great artist from the 2000s, from the late 2000, well, zero, late 00s, early 2010s. I loved Fleet Foxes. I love their first album. Just a great, you know, folk rock album with really cool, like, Baroque elements, great harmonies. Uh, very Beach Boys y meets Crosby Souls and Nash. Almost kind of a little bit of prog in there, maybe, especially on their second album. I think this is a great album. Their second album here, Helplessness Blues from 2011, is, I think is even better. They get dig a little deeper. Um, there's some really complex stuff on here, but it's all very accessible. Great melodies, great harmonies, and just it's such a, such. I, there was a period where I was playing this album nonstop for months and months. So I became a huge fan. So I was looking forward to their third album. And I was really disappointed with that third album. Cracked Up is the album. It came out in 2017. So the leader of the band, Robin Pecknold, brilliant, brilliant songwriter, great singer, decided to go on a cut and paste kind of, uh, what would you say, tangent on this album. Taking cues from Brian Wilson, kind of the smile era, you know, the a la Good Vibrations, Heroes and Villains, but taking it to the extreme on this album. I mean, you get into a song, it's like 15 seconds in, it's already changing into another part, then another 30 seconds goes by, changes into another part. That's how this entire, just ba basically this entire album is like that. There's nothing that sticks with you because you can't get a, a grip on what is going on in these compositions. I saw them about two or three times on this tour and it was obvious that the audience was not reacting too positively to this new material. I sure wasn't. And when they would play something from the first two albums, people would just, you know, would love it. There was this rejoice and rapture going on in the audience. But people were perplexed by this album. I could not get into it. I just thought it was really a failure of an album. And even I tried their fourth album. Uh, maybe that album was a little more uh, accessible. It was called Shore, but it sounded like new age music. And that really turned me off. So that, that was it for me in the Fleet Foxes fandom. From this album onward, Another group, there couldn't have been a there couldn't have been a, a more band I was obsessed with in the early '80s, early to mid '80s in REM. I, I I played those first three or four albums to death in my stereo at home, in my car. I, I knew every nuance of those albums. 
But by this, by the by the fifth album, I guess this would be the fifth album, right? Fifth album. I was starting to lose interest. I, I really thought the songwriting was just not really sticking with me personally. Ironically, this was a huge album. It featured the one I love, a huge hit. And uh, but the rest of the album, I, I don't know. I just found it kind of dull and boring. I never liked It's the End of the World as we know it. I don't know. There's something about um, those early early REM albums. They have a lot of mystique. Uh, I liked Michael Stipe's mumbling voice in those early albums. I, I, you could see gradually, album to album, from Life's Rich Pageant onward, he's getting that more whiny sounding voice, which I really dislike. Um, but I tell you, what really ended it for me was the next album, Green. They signed a multi-million dollar contract with Warner Brothers and I put out this album. I thought this album was terrible. I really do. You know, I'm sure a lot of you are going to go, what are you talking about? I just couldn't get into it. You know, Pop Song 89, just some really weak songs on here. Hair Shirt, I don't know, World Leader Pretend. I saw the tour in 1989 at the Forum, and it was no longer that grassroots band that I loved, that the college radio crowd loved. Uh, it wasn't the same band I saw at the Hollywood played in 84. Uh, they became more uh, pompous, and I don't know, Michael Stipe more eccentric. It just, it just became a turnoff to me. And uh, this was pretty much it for me and R.E.M., this album right here going forward. I never liked anything after this album. Another great band. They had a lot of ups and downs in their careers, but this was pretty much uh, the death knell for this band going forward. They just became a golden oldies band. They had nothing new to offer. I thought their period in the early 70s, I've mentioned it before. I'm talking about the Beach Boys, uh, the period of um, Sunflower, Surf's Up, Carl and the Passion So Tough, and Holland was a great period for the Beach Boys. Really mature period, Carl Wilson being more the band leader, um, and just, just more mature songwriting and less of that surfer kind of stuff. And I thought this album was absolutely horrible. 15 big ones. This is their kind of reunion album. A lot of bad 50s covers on here. Their version of rock and roll music might be the worst version I've ever heard of that song. And just a lot of just, just mediocre crap. And from here on in, the Beach Boys would just be an oldies act. I never liked a thing they did after this album. What I heard on the radio, I thought was horrible. Kokomo, all that stuff. Yeah, they were never the same after Holland, in my opinion. Um, and another group I loved, but I was really disappointed by their uh, final album with the original uh, band, and that is The Clash. I loved their first album, Give Them Enough Rope. Of course, London Calling. Sandinista, although bloated, I thought had a lot of great tracks. Would have made a great single album. I could never get into combat rock. I just never could get into it. There's only one track on here I like, and that's Straight to Hell. Great song by Joe Strummer. But I was really perplexed and surprised at how big a hit Rock the Casbah became. When I heard the song on here, Rock the Casbah, before it became a hit, I never even thought it had hit potential, but it did. And then Should I Say or Should I Go is just kind of a mediocre rocker. It's not White Riot, you know? It's not Hateful or any of those great tracks. The rest of the album is just all this kind of, um, I don't know, what would you call it? Um, this kind of experimental stuff. Sean Flynn, Adam Tan, Death is a Star. I don't know. Very dull. But I guess it's nothing compared to um, Cut the Crap, which I never bought. Uh, just hearing what people thought of that album when it came out just made me not even want to go there. I mean, The Clash are not The Clash without Mick Jones, right? They're just not The Clash. So they should have stopped. They probably should have just stopped after this album. It looked like... They were pretty much done after this point. They'd um, run out of steam. It seems like uh, Strummer and Jones were not really getting along at this point. There were some problems before this album was made. After this album was made, there were problems at the US, uh, the US Festival in 83. I think that was their last show they ever did with Mick Jones. But yeah, never could get into combat rock. Another thing is I think The Who should have stopped after Keith Moon. I think they would, that would have cemented their place as one of the greatest bands of the rock era, but they kept going, kept going, putting out mediocre stuff here like Face Dances. Though I think there are a few good songs on here. I think Another Tricky Day is a great track. You Better You Bet's a good single, but it sounds more like a Pete Townsend solo album. It's just nothing really memorable on this album. And then, of course, their, their last album, before their supposed, you know, um, last tour. It's hard. Not a good album. I thought Athena was okay. And a lot of people like Eminence Front. I don't know what the appeal of that tune is. I, the rest of the album is just dull. Dull as shit. 
again, they should have stopped after Keith Moon. I thought Who Are You was a pretty good album. And another band, I really, uh, when Pete Farden and James Honeyman Scott died, I was really devastated. I thought the Pretenders were just an incredible band. That first album, that second album was great. And even though this album is not bad, it's really the last gasp for me and the Pretenders. There's some great material on here. Back on the Chain Gang, Time the Avenger, 2,000 Miles. A lot of great material, but it just isn't the same band without Farndon and Honeyman Scott. I didn't like anything they put out after this album. I think each uh, each successive album became worse. Get Close. I even tried getting into an album called Pact back in the 90s. It just wasn't very good. So I think they, they really lost something without Peter Peter Farnan and James Honeyman Scott. But this, for me, was the last gasp for me, for the Pretenders. A couple other honorable mentions I want to mention in this video is Rod Stewart. I love his first four albums. The Rod Stewart album, uh, Gasoline Alley, Every Picture Tells a Story, Never a Dull Moment. But that album that came out after Never a Dull Moment, Smiler, I thought was terrible. After that, he signed with Warner Brothers, became this, you know, mainstream, just you know, buffoon with uh, songs like Hot Legs and Do You Think I'm Sexy. Still love those early albums, but I think Smiler was kind of the death knell for me with Rod Stewart. And then, of course, U2. Oh, God. The, the, I think their first album, Boy, was a classic. I don't think they ever made a better album. October was good. War was decent. But I thought Unforgettable Fire was an absolute piece of shit album. And I think they became one of the most pretentious, appalling bands of all time. That's where I'm going to leave it today, with U2 and The Unforgettable Fire. It was a bad record for me. And I want to know what albums that you think were the end for you, a particular artist. Put those in the comment section. As always, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Please press the subscribe button if you haven't, all, haven't done so already. And uh, we'll see you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.